Elder Lorenzo Snow, we, as Latter-day Saints, profess to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the restoration of the fullness of the everlasting gospel, in the restoration of the holy priesthood with its privileges and powers, and in the restoration of the authority to administer to the sick and to receive, through the medium of this gospel which we have espoused, supernatural gifts and blessings, the Holy Spirit which communicates a knowledge of things past, of things present, and of things to come. And when we received this gospel, we covenanted before God that we would be led, that we would be governed, and would follow the suggestions of the Holy Spirit, that we would follow the suggestions of the principle that gives life, that gives knowledge, that gives understanding of the things of God, that communicates the mind of God, and that we would labor for the accomplishment of the purposes of God in the salvation of the human family, adopting as a motto of life the kingdom of God or nothing. How far we have kept those covenants during the past fifty years and followed the dictates of the Holy Spirit, we ourselves must be the judges. So far as we have done this, so far we have the blessings of the Almighty descended upon us, and our minds have been enlightened, our understandings enlarged, and we have moved forward in the path of holiness, in the path of perfection, and which enables us this day to stand in the knowledge and power of God, and in the intelligence of heaven just in proportion as we have observed the spirit of those covenants which we made at the waters of baptism, and just so far as we have failed in our faithfulness and our adherence to our engagements, just so far have we been losers in this enterprise in which we have engaged to obtain eternal life, to obtain wisdom and knowledge and divine intelligence sufficiently to stem the tide of evils and temptations that surround us. And just so far as we have followed the suggestions of this divine spirit, have we experienced peace and joy to our souls. We have discomfited the enemy. We have laid up unto ourselves treasures that moth and rust cannot destroy. So far have we forwarded ourselves in the path of the celestial kingdom. Just so far have we secured ourselves the blessings and privileges that pertain to the celestial law. When these things were opened up to our view, the principles of the gospel and the glory of the celestial worlds, it was then our privilege to enjoy a blessing to a certain extent, just as though we had been translated into the celestial worlds. It was our privilege to enjoy a certain amount of the blessings that pertain to those laws. And just so far as we have conformed to those laws that pertain to our temporal salvation, just so far as we have obeyed the instructions given to us in regard to our temporal union, just so far we stand in prosperity before God and before the world, just so far as we have been introduced to open our hearts to display the principles of philanthropy in the exercise of our religion, just so far do we stand this day approved of the Almighty God, just so far as we have secured the implements or the means to defend ourselves against the approaching evils, just so far as in all our settlements, cities, towns, and villages, as we have observed these laws that pertain to our temporal obligations, just so far has prosperity attended our exertions, and just so far as the spirit of union prevailed in our midst, and we have advanced ourselves in these principles. And just so far as we have ignored these things, just so far do we stand weak today before God and before the world. A sufficiency of information has been placed before us in the revelations of former days, in the revelations to us at the present time to guide us in all our affairs, both spiritual and temporal, to guide us even to the celestial kingdom, to receive of the fullness of the Father, if, after the expiration of fifty years, we as a community do not stand in that high relationship to God as we would wish, the fault is not in the Lord, it is not the lack of information placed before us, but the lack is in ourselves. It arises from our ignorance or neglect, or from a desire peradventure to serve the spirit of the world instead of the spirit of God. It is true when we look upon the temporal position that thousands and tens of thousands occupy at the time we receive this gospel, and when we take into consideration the spiritual fetters by which we were bound, and the ignorance that attended us in our spiritual affairs at that time, we certainly may feel thankful to the Lord for the progress we have made when comparing our present position with that we sustained when we received the gospel. There must arise in our hearts the deepest gratitude to the Almighty for so far redeeming us spiritually and temporally, as we find ourselves this day. For the progress we have made, we are indebted to the blessings of God attending our diligence and faithfulness, and we should renew our covenants before God and the holy angels, that we will, God being our helper, serve him more faithfully during the ensuing year than we have in the past, that our public and private life, 
Our actions and the spirit and influence we wield may be in keeping with the motto, The Kingdom of God or Nothing. I trust, my brethren, that we may devote ourselves entirely to the service of our God in the establishment of his Zion on the earth, zealously laboring for the interest of truth and righteousness on the earth, until it shall become a joy to us to be so engaged, that it may become second nature to us to serve God and keep his commandments, and to observe the celestial law, that we may so enjoy the Holy Spirit in our hearts, that we may overcome the world and establish the celestial law in our minds, and establish it in our practice, that we may so understand ourselves and our privileges, that we may in this life secure a considerable portion of the blessings that pertain to the celestial law, and which are to be enjoyed in the celestial glory. That so far as God has given us power in the earth, so far as he gives us possessions, houses and lands, flocks and herds, that these possessions shall become sanctified by our doings and actions in the manner in which we exercise ourselves in relation to them, that they may become sanctified, and that we may show ourselves worthy of the priesthood we possess, in establishing God's power, in establishing his laws, and everything that pertains to the celestial glory, just so far as God gives us this power, that we may show to the heavens that we are worthy of this gospel, and this confidence that God has placed in us, in restoring to us the fullness of the holy priesthood. And now I close my remarks by bearing my testimony to the knowledge of God that I have received in relation to this work. It is true. I received a knowledge of, this, of the truth of this work by a physical administration of the blessings of God. And when receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I knew I was immersed in a divine principle that filled my whole system with inexpressible joy. And from that day to the present has blessings crowned my labors. And when baptizing people and administering the ordinances of the Holy Priesthood, God has confirmed those administrations by imparting the Holy Ghost giving a knowledge to the individuals to whom I administered, convincing them that the authority was delegated from heaven, and every elder who has gone forth to preach this everlasting gospel and acted in the spirit of his calling can bear the same testimony, that through their administrations and these holy ordinances, the glory and power of God has been made manifest in a convincing manner upon the heads of those to whom they have administered. This is our testimony. That was the testimony fifty years ago, of a certain individual who stood forth and claimed that God had authorized him to baptize people for the remission of sins and lay hands upon them for the reception of the Holy Ghost, which should impart unto them a knowledge from the eternal worlds that he had this authority. This person was Joseph Smith, and he conferred this authority, which was given unto him by holy angels upon others who were sent forth to bear testimony to the world that those who would receive these holy ordinances should receive the testimony from the Almighty, that they were thus authorized to so administer. And this is our testimony, and this is my testimony before this people, and before the world. And may God bless us. May he pour out his Spirit upon the Latter-day Saints. And may we be faithful in all our labors, having the motto indelibly stamped upon our hearts, The Kingdom of God, or Nothing. Amen.